Atheist Nomads, episode 87. That's my name, part two, with Nick Morgan Moore. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hey there. And joining us once again is Nick Morgan Moore. Hello. So good we had to bring him back. Yes. (laughs) We actually, I think we got more feedback on... The last episode we had him on than any other episode we've done. <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all, all that, uh, and that resulted in the parental warning you guys put out. So yes, that's good. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, this yes. is an adult podcast. If you are a child, talk to your parents. If you are a parent with children present, what the hell is wrong with you? If your name, <laughs> if your name is Paul, turn us off and then promote us on your show. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for everybody else, you can just fuck off. Yeah, Yay. that's right. There, there will be discussion of squirting this week. Just, uh, just <laughs> again, saying. if you don't know again. what that is, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you missed that in episode seventy-eight, uh, yes, we will be we'll be talking about it some more. Uh, so, Nick, yeah. what's what's new? What's happened in the last two weeks? Oh, lots of stuff. Uh, I'm putting together a fringe festival. I'm emceeing a gig this week. Uh, fringe festivals for later in the year. What's a fringe festival? Uh, Fringe Festival, there's there's two big festivals in Brisbane every year. The first one is the Brisbane Comedy Festival, and that's sort of for uh, um, established acts, people who have, you know, uh, there's a few international acts, a lot of national acts, uh, established comedians, people who have been in the game for a while. Um, and I didn't do one in that one because I'm not quite there yet. But uh, the Fringe Festival is for the up-and-comers. The Fringe Festival is for people to, you know, get their first show out or polish their act and it, it's it's definitely the more edgy one you know it's it's uh, less polished but it's it's real good so i'm going in there with some friends we're going to book some theaters and get some dates happening and i'll be promoting it from early like it's not till late in the year but we we want everyone who can make it to be there because we're going to put on a good show so nice that's, yeah yeah that's awesome it'll be my first feature show so i'm very nice. excited that whole yeah. fringe fringe festival that sounds way much more fun than just watching fucking headlines. I mean, you can see their act mm. anytime you want to on YouTube, but <laughs> yeah, well, the yeah. the people who do the Brisbane Comedy Festival are amazing. There's some really really class acts there. Um, a lot of local talent that's gone national and come back with mm. their uh, with all the experience they've picked up on their travels, and they've just been kicking ass left and right. So it's really good to see that. And, uh, but the Fringe Festival is sort of like our chance, our time to shine, our chance to step it up a notch. So I'm, I'm keen as to do it because I want to be doing feature shows. I want to be traveling and doing feature shows. Uh, incidentally, been invited to go on a tour heading down, uh, to New South Wales and doing a, a big old road trip. So we'll be doing, we're doing a long drive, um, hitting up as many pubs and clubs as we can on our way through rural, uh, New South Wales and, uh, coastal New South Wales. So we'll probably do a big, loop and come back nice so that's awesome. going to be a lot of fun get into some trouble with some comedians on the road that'll, that'll be <laughs> awesome man that actually sounds a lot like a lot of fun though i'd rather see yeah. the young and hungry guys <laughs> yeah yeah well i did uh, i did some fringe shows um not last year but the year before and yeah. uh that was so much fun we got brutal man it was so good like I, uh, yeah, I think I did my dirtiest set ever at Fringe, and then like my entire comedy act just turned into that from there. <laughs> but it's what it's what my fans seem to expect from me now, which is good. Um, I got I was given some advice uh, by some uh, in quotation marks professional comedians that basically said, "Give up on doing what you like and just suck for ten years, and then when you're completely mediocre and no one cares about you." then you can do some edgy stuff. And I was like, I don't want your career. That isn't the, uh, that isn't the trajectory that I want to take. I want to build an audience who, who like what I do, who I am. When I'm on stage, I'm being honest and I don't feel 
feel the need to tone that down in order to make people not offended. And I don't need to tone it down to make people not care. I'd prefer some people to be offended and some people to fucking love it. So uh, I'm just up there doing what feels right to me. And so far, I've been getting positive feedback constantly. So that's, yeah, from from the audiences, from the fans. And uh, they're who I'm there for. So that's what I'm doing. All right, because Bill Cosby is not your name. Yes, that's right. Well, oh, I, I'm going to put something in your drink, and then I'm going to do other things, and I'm probably not going to get in trouble for it. <laughs> well, and you're not just there for the fans. You're also there for yourself. Because if you're that's not right. enjoying it, the comedy, you're not going to keep doing it. Yeah, oh, in yeah. fact, like if, if I'm ever having a hard gig, and it, exceedingly rare now, which is awesome. You know, Usually when I get on stage, I, I know that I'm doing well. Uh, but sometimes there's just a night where there's no crowd because the promoter didn't pimp the show right. And uh, and if the audience isn't feeling it, I, I say to them, I say, uh, I'll tell you what I tell girls during sex. I'm not here for your enjoyment. I'm here for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, of course, you should be trying to uh, to please in either scenario. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Only yeah, if you want to see them I mean, again. Let, let's be honest. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. I do like seeing them again. I've, I've got a joke about the repeat performance that I do in my act, so... People want to see that, then they're going to have to come and see my act. But I teased it here. You heard it first on Atheist Nomads. <laughs> awesome. A lot of my set is just me giving good advice. I, I really should get paid more for this stuff. Really? Such as? What, what sort uh, of good advice can you give us? Uh, we talked about ass licking last time, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Did I tell you about, like, I, I have some friends who... uh uh, a, a young couple, uh, they were, in fact, uh, at the time they were together, and I, I, I was having dinner with them, and I said to them, uh, you guys licked each other's asses? And, uh, and they were like, no. And I'm like, you have to lick each other's asses. You just have to. Because, like, if you ever break up, God forbid, you know, you ever break up, imagine their next partner, right? Imagine her next boyfriend and her explain to him that she licked your butthole. <laughs> and, uh, and then they broke up and she da- started dating like a week later, another friend of ours. And we were like, ha, a guy knows what butthole tastes like. <laughs> you know, web yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else is new? What else is new? Oh, I met, uh, I met Matt Dillahunty, Seth Andrews and Aaron Ra. Oh shit. Yeah. 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 Awesome guys. Yeah. We, we, we played the promo for their tour. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I got to catch their show on the tour, <clears throat> and I also got to have uh, have dinner with them one night. That was that was a real fun experience. I'm glad that I went. Yeah. Cool. I got to hang out with uh, Matt Dillahunty. I don't know about a year ago now, over at mm. Dr. Daryl Ray's house, and man, not like we were just like one on one interacting, but that guy is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I'll say that. yeah, he is. Yeah, I told him some of my filthy jokes, and he laughed. So that means that. Uh, that means that I like him. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't already like him from the work that he does, he does good work. Yeah, I met and, Seth Andrews at uh, right after the Reason Rally a couple of years ago, mm. and and uh, we were eating dinner next to each other, and I had no idea who he was. <laughs> I'd been watching his videos, yeah. but yeah, if he was wearing a Thinking Atheist shirt, I figured he was a fan. Mm. And uh, yeah, you never self promote. Then I found out that he just really, really cranks up the uh the enhancers on his voice really yeah oh yeah a, a little a little bit i recognized him from his voice in person but yeah on his show he definitely cranks up a bit i uh, i wonder if they chucked some reverb in his voice during his presentation his was fantastic <laughs> at the show um yeah but he, he was quite wiped out in person because they've been chasing kangaroos around all day but uh yeah no he he's he's a good guy too and uh yeah just lovely people it was it was really nice meeting all of those guys and uh yeah it's nice when you you know somebody's got some success but then when you meet them they're not a jerk and that was these guys these guys rocked nice awesome yeah. At their show, actually, it was really funny. Uh, really, really boss moment for me. I was, uh, I was walking around after the Unholy Trinity show in Brisbane, just talking to some people. And every so often, I'd just catch people looking at me. 
and then uh, and then I make eye contact and they come over and they're like, "You're Nick Morganmore," and I go, "That's my name." Oh God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or or they come over and do that, which is awesome. So, <laughs> so where's that come from? Uh, my Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is my full name. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm just promoting myself. I've got such a cool name that I don't need a stage name, so I've just been pushing it as Nick Morgan Moore on everything. And uh, one week on the Imaginary Friends show, somebody had like just slightly off of their name, and they were like, uh, "It's not exactly my name." And then when it came to plug my Twitter, I was just like gloating, like rubbing it in. And I'm like, <laughs> "Well, my Twitter is Nick Morgan Moore." That is my name. And it totally became its own thing. So now people chant that out at me. It's so much fun. Ah, cool. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really nice. And being recognized from my voice at a, at a show, really good moment for me. Nice. So you can like yeah. just put out and do jazz hands and, and just, you know, play it up now. Yeah. You, you yeah, have, you it. have, you have catchphrase. That's it. I has catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy. I remember getting, uh, Northwest Free Thought Conference a few years back. I was mm-hmm. uh, before we started the podcast. I've been on uh, Chariots of Iron a few times, and uh, there was, <laughs> I think, three people that recognized me from my voice. Yeah, and, uh, yeah one I'm was one Wesley. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that's pretty sad when you fanboy off of a person that was, you know, on a on a podcast a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I think we covered your childhood pretty well. Yeah. And those who didn't listen to that episode, it was uh, just <laughs> two episodes ago. So episode 85. Well, let's move that on. Let's move that on a little bit later. Um, uh, you're not, you're not a, a tubby fuck anymore. Uh, yes. Okay. You want to talk about that? Okay. Well, no, I'm trying to like move, move back into your like, uh, Late, you're. I mean, you're pushing late thirties now. Oh no, early. Uh, no, not even early. I'm 28, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Jeez, you've seen some pictures of me. I have not fared well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wesley likes adding a decade or two onto people's ages. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, gonna, it's weird. Though, like I, I always have people complimenting me on my skin, and I'm like, you can't compliment someone on their skin, guys. Like, as nice <laughs> as you try and set, make it sound. <laughs> We all know that you're thinking about wearing me as a people suit, okay? That's that's all that that means when you tell me that I have nice skin. But my, my uh, mind but went, fact, my mind went straight to lampshade. But okay, mm, yeah, and you definitely but I, can't I, compliment I someone on their skin when they're 28. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I've I've worked a few jobs in the sun, but I always wear a big hat. You know, that's that's I live in Australia. Growing up, there was ads on TV for sun safety. Because it's such a big concern on account of us being like one or two kilometers away from the surface of the sun. So you do have to be very careful here. Um, And I do moisturize. I've got a full skincare regimen that I do. Uh, I've got uh, moisturizing facial masks that I wear. And I put on uh, uh, now, in fact, I put on uh, just a small amount of makeup before I go on stage. Um, Mm. I was looking at photos of me on stage and I was like, why am I shiny and red? I look like a penis while I'm up there. That should be my personality, not my visual. Um, <laughs> and so I just got a friend of mine from Korea brought me over this. Uh, I, I like it because it's anti-darkening is what's written on it. Uh, and mm. that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, it's just a whitening anti-wrinkle cream. Uh, but she tried to match it to my skin tone. So it's like anti-darkening compared to the Koreans, but it's like my natural skin tone. So it just cuts down on, on the sheen. So when I'm on stage, the, uh, the spotlight doesn't make me shiny or, or doesn't bring out the red pigment in my skin. So like mm. now on stage, I look really good in photos while I'm wearing this stuff. So yeah, I, I, I'm fully an advocate of, uh, of cosmetics. Like everybody, you know, goes on about how, you know, it's un- unethical for girls to wear makeup because it gives people a false expectation. I'm like, screw that. You know, like I, I put this on and it, I haven't slept for three days and, you know, I'm haggard and tired. I put this on. I look like I've had 12 hours of sleep. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Lauren put that, makeup on me Sunday. Uh, we were getting engagement yeah. pictures and she didn't want me to look washed out in the pictures. Nice. Yeah, no, that, that's good. So she put the makeup on that was for her skin tone on me and I looked ill. I, <laughs> I didn't have that normal red. Because I have mm. have a red complexion and kind of was, a ginger, 
yeah, it was it was it was kind of weird. That's <laughs> what my face would look like if I had normal pigment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I I just pretty much stop at like I I get my na- I get manicures and I get gel nail. So, mm. Yeah. No, oh, I love I love getting manicures and pedicures. Um, mm. That's just a thing that I enjoy, you know. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, I I try and take a bit a bit care of myself. Uh, definitely, before I had a proper skincare regimen, a girl that I knew started working for a cosmetics line, and mm. so I I specifically had sex with her so she'd have to come over and and do my face and and my nails, <laughs> um, and that was worth it. That was that was definitely worth it. That, um, that that's an amazing trade off right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, she brought over she brought over the me, like the men's line and like she had a full catalog of the women's stuff, and so she brought me over the men's sample stuff, and it was like four items, and I'm like, show me the men's section in this thing, and it was one page, and it was like <laughs> aftershave, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You you find me the stuff that's for eighty year old women who've been working in the sun their entire lives. And and you give me that stuff. That's the stuff that I need. Uh, but thankfully, in Korea, that's the same equivalent of what they give to ten year old boys. So this uh, these Korean skincare stuff that I've got is awesome. Hmm. Are you are, are you sure if you don't like peel the label off, there's not another label under there that says "Whoa, man" for the <laughs> whoa man in us all. Hmm. Maybe maybe a friend of mine pointed out that one of the reasons that they're so good is in Korea how they treat their animals. You know. Like, uh, in Western countries, we kind of have to try and be, at least be a little bit ethical. Whereas in Korea, it's preferred to beat your animals. So, uh, when you don't, when, when you specifically enjoy inflicting harm, you actually end up with the real, real good shit. I mean, if the worst thing you're doing to your dog is putting makeup on it, then yeah, it's, (laughs) I guess that's better than beating it. Yeah. Well, in Korea, they put it on the dog and then they eat the dog. So, you know, it's. It's all the oh. circle of life, isn't it? Like, you don't want to just be, you know, killing a lab animal to test out some shampoo and then tossing it on the on the dead lab animal pile. Like, you, you've got to find a use for that. We've got to be frugal, guys. There's billions of us on this planet. Everyone needs to eat. So, that thing I was just talking about, whoa, man, uh, I got to ask, have you ever seen Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Yes. Okay. Was that a reference? I haven't seen it since, like, forever. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. It it, totally it made nice. me think of uh, it made me think of so I married an axe murderer because oh. uh, yeah because Mike Myers had a uh, you know he did the beat poetry he totally he, was he, yeah and he used to like talk about whoa woman whoa, whoa man. man yeah <laughs> and then he'd do a then he'd do like a, a verse about like some crazy chick that he dated that was a fun movie I like that movie yeah they should yeah. do more like that. Yeah, you should do less Shrek and and more fu- actually funny movies. <laughs> who was that? Oh, the, girl? Fu- she had the first really pretty Shrek girl with curly cool. blonde hair. Yeah, who was that? You know, yeah. I can look it up while we keep talking. Blah blah blah. <laughs> We're was, staying on topic. Yeah, the first Shrek was <laughs> quite good. Yeah, uh, yeah, but like, it had did they hairs. need five? Did they need five of them? It hasn't kept its quality I, with with their number. I right. I, I end up. Getting stuck. It was at Christmas time with Lauren's family. Uh, what mm-hmm. was on the TV it was it was like Shrek Eight, I think. Mm. Oh god! Yeah, wow. It's up to something ridiculous now. And I guess they're they're all watchable, but the first one was really something special. No, that the one I was watching re- wasn't. Oh, okay, it was yeah. it was absolute crap. Not even watchable. No. But I'll tell you who is watchable: Nancy mm. Travis. That's the one. Oh, yeah. is she done lately? Tell you what, you want some fun Christmas specials? Look up the Star Wars holiday special. See if you can find it. uh, I saw it years ago, like um, Life Day. (laughs) Jeez, everybody gives Jar Jar Binks shit from the from the (laughs) prequel series, but like the Ewoks were terrible, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like people just have like this. Dustin, there's like a five minute segment of of Wookies talking. There's no subtitles. (laughs) They're just talking back and forth. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so lost <laughs> yeah yeah <it's, laughs> that's awesome but it, it's old so it's okay or something like that <laughs> old shit is still shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, look at, look at I, I do so. like overextended metaphors and like when they do just go off the wall for no reason and so like for that I guess this could be in that category of ter- so terrible that it's worth watching. 
like uh, like the room, for example, or uh, or ooh, what else? Manos, the Razorhead. The, the Razorhead had merit, merits. Manos, um, the hands of fate. Man, you know, oh man, worst movie that I've ever seen, Krull. You, really? You I kind of like Krull? that. One. You really like Krull? Oh, I, I was Krull like six years me. old and I liked it. It was. Uh, it was like Beastmaster, but he had this cool, like, ninja star th- blade that had these blades that would come out even longer, and it was kind of That's cool. all you remember about that movie? Yeah. There was a Cyclops who couldn't blink. <laughs> okay, so it's like the, <laughs> the, the tower from, uh, or, uh, the, the, the tower from the fucking Hobbits. Big ass eye looking all around. Yeah, I yeah, I guess. And it was so bad, man. Like, I was trying to keep up with the story while it was going, and I was, I, I said to my friends while we were watching it, you know how, like, most movies have a budget? Well, this movie was made with a debt. Like, they didn't even have money in the first place. Yeah, uh, I, I generally make a, a point of not watching bad movies. Yeah, I had no idea it was that bad when I put it on, but, like, now I know, and yeah. so I let people know, don't watch Krull. Krull is bad. <laughs> But uh, I, I actually made the same. Do you guys know the Korean movie Old Boy? Mm-mm. No. They made Spike Lee made a uh, or Spike Lee, I think Spike Lee or Spike Jones. I don't know. Am I racist for getting people mixed up? I don't know. One's uh, white, one's black. Oh, okay, the black one. Lee. Yeah, yeah. He made a remake of uh, of Old Boy, and um, it was almost word for word from the original Korean one. And, uh, and so my friend was texting me while I was watching it and I was like, this is a pretty good movie. And then as soon as it was over, I called him up and I was like, don't watch old boy. Just don't do it. And I didn't give any explanation as to why anyone who's seen it knows why, because at the end you realize what's so bad. You don't the entire movie, but then at the end you're like, oh, that's bad. And so I said, don't watch it. Just don't do not just, just get rid of it. Like, you know, you've got on DVD, just don't even bother. Just return it. It's okay. And, uh, and three hours later, he called me up and just abused the fuck out of me. He's like, <laughs> why did you make me watch that? And I just cacked up because I knew that he would. I knew that he would, but I also knew that I couldn't give it a recommendation. So yeah, I had to use trickery. Have, have either of you seen Citizen Kane? Uh, no. Uh, I feel, uh, I feel everyone asleep. references it. Everyone references it, Every- but I, I haven't actually watched it. They yeah. do. I mean, Orson Welles, big movie that everybody's supposed to love it. But there's like yeah. a giant plot hole. I mean, when he's talking about Rosebud, he's in a sealed off room. Nobody's in there. And he's talking no. to himself. How in the fuck would they know he's saying Rosebud? Yeah. They need to make a they need to make a sequel where Peter Dinklage was hiding under his desk the entire time because they were gay lovers. Dinklage, Peter Ro- Dinklage, Ro- Peter Ro- Dinklage. Rosebud. <laughs> You know, in, in college, I tried watching both Citizen Kane and 2001 A Space Odyssey. I like oh, the second. And I, was, I love know, 2001. Of course, mm-hmm. I was a college student, so I was quite sleep deprived. And those old movies <laughs> are so slow. I, very, I'd very fall, slow. Yeah, I'd fall asleep yeah. about two hours in. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I watched 2001 with my whole family when I was like 12. And uh, I looked around the room and i realized that everyone in the room was asleep except for me and i was riveted it it captured something in me i love that movie that was so good oh yeah yeah so uh in fact as 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 quite a hairy man uh even even as a younger man uh when i was in high school i was quite hairy already i uh i used to do the um the ape impression and i i'd learned it entirely from 2001 I had that down. I was so good at it. Nice. Yeah, I do like the full transitional scene where he's learning how to use tools and, you know, evolving from from one uh, to another because uh, it was like Habilis and then Erectus kind of is what it was implying because uh, after, well, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen 2001, um, they start very spontaneously going from being uh, very animal-like to very much more human-like. And uh, one of the ways that manifests is they stop crouching around so much and start walking more upright and using tools. And there's a, this full transitional scene in the movie, and I could do that uh, in real life, and people were amazed. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like History of the World Part 1, where they start off where they're, you know, crouched down, they learn to stand up, and they start to masturbate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mel Brooks is badass. Hmm. Yeah, Mel Brooks is good, eh? He should do some more movies. Mm. He's so old now, though. He's like a million. 
He is, but man. But he, his his son's done some good work. I didn't know he had a son. Work. It's, uh, I mean, it's not uh, it's not his fault that Tom Cruise ruined his story. <laughs> he oh wrote. Uh, he wrote. What was that? Max Brooks. Really? Oh, yeah. holy shit! That's him. That's his son. Yeah. Yeah, and if you've read the book, you know how good that book is. Like, the book makes that movie look ridiculous in comparison. Yeah, uh, wow. that, Yeah. You, I, either you guys read the book of World War Z? No, not the World book, World War no. Z in, uh, in American vernacular? Uh, read that book. It's so much better than the movie. The movie doesn't even touch on the, how good the book is. Different story as well. Like, the book is is really something special. I'm, I, I'm I can understand. I why. Yeah, yeah I can one. understand their problem, though. Like, if they were going to make it into a more faithful adaptation of the book, then it'd have to be a series instead of a movie. Because hmm. um, it was, like, the, the title of the book is an oral history of the zombie apocalypse. Um, and it's a dude, uh, pretty much Tom Cruise, uh, not Tom Cruise, um, uh, the, said his the name. Blonde. Yes, yeah. Blonde, beautiful man, married to Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt. Um, he, uh, kind of his character, kind of not. Uh, (laughs) it's a dude who, after the fact, the world is reestablishing order, and this dude is going around interviewing people to find out what the fuck happened. Kind of to try and make sure that it doesn't happen again, but also because it's, it's our history, it's important. And so he's collecting people's stories from along the way. And each story, uh, even if it's only tangentially related, it, it, uh, it has hints and clues that carry through the entire book. So very good book. Very much worth the read. Hmm. It's been on quite a few years, but I, re- I read the uh, Zombie Survival Guide, but I never got into World War Z. Oh, it's even better than Zombie Survival Guide. <laughs> Zombie Survival Guide was building towards World War Z. So, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that to anybody who likes reading books. Uh, very simply written, so if you're not a big reader, it's still easy to get into. Because hmm. you know how, like, there's there's some books that are just so much harder for people to get into than others. Yeah. Like, I loved, I loved June. I love June. But if you're not an avid reader, you can struggle a little bit. But uh, but this book, not even like that. So simply written. Hmm. I, and I do appreciate that. You know, it's uh, it's a skill that's important. Both are important, I think, but uh, but yeah, it's definitely a skill that's important because uh, as a communicator, you want to get your point across and you want to do that as effectively as possible. And it depends what exactly you're going for. You might want to purposefully obfuscate the point, but uh, but other than that, yeah, you want to be able to get your point across very easily and uh, and suck new readers in. So yeah, I guess it's, it's probably always a little bit the goal of the author to to get people into reading, you know? If, it should uh, be. Yeah, it, it definitely should be. If somebody, if I were an author and somebody were to say to me, yeah, I didn't really read books until I started reading your books and now I'm really into books, I'd feel really touched. But uh, usually what I get is, yeah, I wasn't really into period jokes and then I heard your period jokes and now <laughs> I'm not at all into period jokes. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> uh. Uh, Speaking oh, about so... bad movies, uh, yeah. Battlefield Earth. Never saw it. <gasps> Scientology yeah. just writ large. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I tried to get it on DVD, but my DVD store didn't even have it. And I was like, "All right, then, that's a ringing endorsement." Oh man. <laughs> yeah. And then all the DVD it. stores closed down. This is what this was some time ago. Yeah. 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 But yeah, <laughs> pretty bad, eh? Oh, oh, truly horrible, man! You could yeah. you could smell the stench through your TV. It's awesome. <laughs> mm. They created the site uh, Rotten Tomatoes solely in in dedication to that. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Before uh, that, they were fresh tomatoes, and they're like, "We need a negative rating." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't even know what they gave Saving Christmas because that has to be. I mean, that that is their worst rated movie ever. Yeah. Yeah, and that was after he had a push for the Christians to go on and like positively mod it as much as possible, and then that led to like this this reflex action from everyone else who was like, no, no, don't don't affect the outcome of this. You don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. The, the funny thing is that you can't even. I mean, you can comment all you want to, but those ratings don't count towards the movie unless you're actually a approved reviewer. Oh. Yeah, and you have to watch multiple movies. So if all you've seen yep. is Saving Christmas, your vote doesn't count. 
So he just got all the actual <laughs> reviewers' attention. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah pissed that's them right. all off. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. He just shot himself in the foot. Uh, <sighs> I love it. You know, I think that movie got either got the most Razzies or tied for the first. And yeah. One of, one yeah. of them was for worst as uh, uh, supporting actor, and that was and it for went to Kirk, Kirk Cameron's yeah. ego. Yeah, that's so good. I love that. <laughs> that <was> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the Razzies, the Razzies are classy too. Um, I really like it. I I reckon uh, when Haley Berry collected her own one for Catwoman mm-hmm. and was like, "Yeah, it was pretty bad." I was like, "Good move, classy." <laughs> Man, I, I don't uh, think most people go in to collect their own. That that's pretty almost cool. Almost none. Almost <laughs> none. Uh but they started a new category for like people who've um who've uh vindicated themselves. Yeah. Um oh. uh, it was someone good who got it this year. Uh I'm gonna give it a search while we just keep talking naturally. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so let's see, Razzies. Oh goodness. Yeah, it's kinda like the Darwin Awards for movies. It's kinda cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. Speaking of, did you ever see the Darwin Awards movie? No. What? Yeah, it sucked. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it had uh, it had David Arquette in it, and oh, uh, no. not Ray Fiennes, the other brother, the other Fiennes brother, Ralph Joseph. Oh, but, the, yeah, the bad one. Yeah, Joseph Fiennes and uh, someone else. It wasn't good. It wasn't mm. good at all. Hmm. Well, I just don't pay attention to David Arquette since, like, what was it, Eight Legged Freaks or Six? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, the, the, the guys are more because it was about it was about spiders. <laughs> How many legs do spiders have? I don't know. Man, uh, eight, I think. Eight. Yeah, it was Eight Legged Freaks. I played the game of that because, like, they they did a good marketing thing. They uh they released a um a game, a playable game, flash game online. Um, and so, and this is back when I was in high school. So we were able to play this game where we were running around shooting, uh, spiders with whatever we could find, slingshots and then nail guns and, um, you know, all, all crossbows, all kinds of stuff. And it was just a fun little game. And there was posters for the movie up in the background because you're in a shopping mall. And so, <laughs> so it was a really good, uh, really good marketing ploy. I, I hadn't seen that before. Um, really simple little FPS. Uh, and then the movie came out, and it was awful. It was horrible. <laughs> Ow. Ow. <laughs> it was so bad. Uh, this I, makes me sad on the inside. I hate spiders. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, spiders and ants uh, freak me the fuck out. Don't like them. <laughs> there's, there's a lot here, eh? Like, I, I was... Uh, I was at my dad's place and a spider roughly the size of my arm crawled across the, crawled across the floor. So yeah, it was huge. It was a huntsman though. So yeah, I got, I, I killed this. I got the bit shit by a recluse in Mexico on a mission trip. Oh yeah. yeah. Fucking tell that story. Got son. a nasty, nasty infection out of it and thought it was God punishing me for resisting the call to the ministry. So I went ahead and turned down an Air Force ROTC scholarship and spent five years studying theology. Oh, I hate spiders. I really uh, hate spiders. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't blame you. We've got some of the worst in the world. Like, I don't know if I mentioned it, but we've got spiders that if they bite you, you your flesh turns necrotic and your limbs fall off. Like, that's that's when you know you got real spiders. Damn. Wow. Right. Pretty much everything in your fucking country wants to kill you. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess it was kind of the perfect place to send convicts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then like the really strong ones survived, and like the most <laughs> handsome, talented genes propagated, which is why we're a nation of winners. <laughs> <laughs> Not even touching that one. <laughs> no, no, no. Just look at Hollywood. There's no very famous A-list celebrities from Australia there, are there? You know, it's, it's not like it's wildly out of proportion to our to our population of our country. No, no. Well, I think we're trying to get rid of Mel Gibson now. <laughs> he, that guy was born in New York. Shut up. <laughs> uh, he's one of yours. No, he's not. <laughs> we don't want him. <laughs> no, we- <laughs> Uh, he, he, uh, he didn't learn anti-Semitism from us. I'll tell you that. 
Actually, he probably did. Australians are so racist. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are. We are. I'm owning it. We are. I was reading a study that was going into it, and it was explaining about how Australia was one of the most racist countries in the world, just unconsciously, because um, our, our populations of, uh, of foreign people are, are quite low still, thanks in part to the white Australia policy. Thanks, politicians from from early Australian history, just being racist dickbags. Good job. Um, there's not that much mixing, so... Uh, and, you know, we've, we've got native Australians. People been here for, you know, 40 to 60,000 years. And, uh, and, but there's just not very many of them. So people just don't have that black friend. So they don't get over that unconscious racism that we kind of a little bit have that's tied into tribalism. Um, and so as a result, uh, especially the very ignorant Australians of which there are a few, uh, are quite racist and, uh, and it's bad. And it sucks, and I don't like it here. <laughs> there is a lot of that in Idaho as well, and yeah. it's, it's just there's there's no diversity. There's yeah, you know we we've got a, a Somali refugee population here, mm. but they all try to keep it to themselves. There's a few black people here. Pretty mm. much all of the Hispanics live in Caldwell, so they're thirty miles away. And mm, yep, yeah, there's almost no diversity. And so it's re- and everybody self segregates. So it's really easy to be racist in an area like this. Tell you what, yeah. Western Washington is just a fucking melting mixing pot. It's mm-hmm. cool. That's what Australia is supposed to be, and that's what we were being told it was for a while. And then we realized that oh no, there there isn't that amount of diversity. We suck. <laughs> um, yeah, oh. it, it, it's really it's really disheartening to live in a country that has one of the highest like land area to population ratios on the planet and yeah. to hear people saying fuck off we're full you know <laughs> as as their response to uh to immigration reform yeah and uh and it's real bad yeah, yeah a better yeah. argument than we're full would be we don't have enough water <laughs> yeah yeah since that's, most of that's our country true. is desert yeah it's hot that's that's all we need to say is it's hot. <laughs> we should say that to the to the asylum seekers. They're like, you know, uh, we want to come to Australia because people are trying to persecute us for just living our lives. And we'll be like, it's hot. And they'll be like, yeah, we understand that. We're like, nah, man, nah, look at this thermometer. And they'll look at it and they're like, change my mind. Change my mind. Going back to Syria. Yeah. yeah I appreciate you telling me. Thanks. I'll, if I'll they're coming go somewhere from else. a place like Indonesia, they'll be like, no, that looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they come via Indonesia because they can't stay there for very long for obvious reasons. <laughs> that being that being that they'll be horribly, horribly murdered and mistreated by the uh-huh. government there. Now, it's not a good eh, place. Indonesia, <laughs> I think, could make a, a legitimate claim of being full. Well, Indonesia makes a yeah. killing on that. So, you know. Yeah. In more ways than one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My yeah, attempt I wonder at, if that, at humor. I wonder <laughs> if that's why they're invading Papua New Guinea and murdering people. I don't know. I was reading about that they've got the the Indonesian military is going onto some islands in Papua New Guinea and just wiping out the native populations, but we don't care because we're full, so we're just keeping an eye on our own business. While, while we while we in fact also perpetrate uh, human rights abuses that are being sanctioned by the United Nations. That's okay. Yeah, we talked about that last time and got really depressed. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> um. So did you guys hear that I've lost over seventy kilograms? Whoa! What? It's You're like 135 pounds, I think. Like what is that in stones? Of stones? Jesus, I don't know. Yeah, it'd what be about 150 sort of metric pounds. Metric is stones. <laughs> stones. You, you just I have to get on a giant bloody uh, set of scales and get someone to throw some stones on the other side, and I'll tell you how okay, much. Okay, 70 That's kilos like- <laughs> is 154 pounds. Yeah. And in st- oh pounds and stones. There we crap. I'm just gonna go to stones so Google will do it. <laughs> And in stones, it's eleven point zero two three one. Eleven stones. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's big yeah. fucking stones. I'd like to go another two stones. Um because they're about six kilos, I think. So yeah, uh yeah, I want to get down another ten from where I am and uh, and reevaluate. But yeah, when I was in the church, I was a big old fat guy. I was so fat. I was the fattest fat guy that ever fatted his ray around the fat camp. Were you so jolly big. though? Were you jolly? Not really. Not really. No, I, uh, I, uh, I wasn't very happy in my time there. Um, 
the mm. cognitive dissonance was getting to me. Uh, the the being made to believe one thing while shutting off my brain didn't work for me because I always liked reading, I always liked uh, movies, I and I never liked people telling me what I could and couldn't watch, what I could and couldn't say, um, and that's all that they do. That's all that they are. <laughs> They're made of rules. And so uh, I fought against it and argued against it and I tried to use my brain as much as possible and eventually that was the divide that, you know, let me leave, um, took me out of that awful, awful place. And uh, when I did, I realized that uh, that God wasn't the one who was making me fat. In fact, it was me. It was my fault. What? So I, uh, being able to realize that meant that I could do something about it and, uh, yeah, just... Steadily over the course of two years, I, uh, I was chipping away at it, got down under 100 kilos. Uh, and then I started chubbing back up again because I didn't realize that you could yo-yo. And you don't see it going back on. You just you just don't. It was like I woke up one day and I looked at myself in the mirror and I just screamed, ah, you're fat again. <laughs> uh, and so since then, I've been steadily losing for uh, about six months now. And I'm back under 100 kilos and I'm going to hit my goal weight and... Uh, I might need some skin reduction surgery because it's getting loose on me, eh? It looks like, looks like my skin is for a much larger person than I am. But, uh, but that's cool. I'll get it taken in. I need to make some of that sweet, sweet comedian money so I can afford elective surgery. <laughs> I, I found looking at a scale every day helps with that a lot. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, uh, mm. one of the things that I did is I got gold clothes. So I got some mm. clothes that were a bit skinny for me and I had them hanging up to look at I'm like one day you will be mine and uh, right now I'm actually at like the slimmest of all of my clothes I need to go buy new clothes I, uh, I send people like photos from my gigs and one of my friends is always like you need new pants go get new pants I'm like <laughs> I'm waiting to lose another 10 kilos get off my ass woman <laughs> so. yeah that's what belts yeah. are for yeah yeah. well it, it doesn't help that my ass crack finishes between my shoulder blades <laughs> Oh god! Yeah, yeah the, just from the loose skin, you oh. know. Like, yeah, I've got I've got wrinkles and folds and stretch marks. This actually, the stretch marks are fading uh, because I've been uh, down for so long. Um, so that's that's a good thing, <laughs> finally. But yeah, yeah, I've got uh, like the skin that people compliment me on is the skin on my face. The skin on my body is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, when I, when I do get uh, get my skin taken in, I don't really care about the texture of it because I'm going to cover it all in tattoos anyway. Nice. Uh, I have a plan, but I'm not going to start until I'm able to keep working on it. So I might need to get the surgery first. So yeah, yeah. no, you, you don't want to have your tattoos get stretched in weird directions. Exactly, exactly. So once my skin fits, I'm getting uh, I'm going to start on my tattoos, and no. I'm going to. Uh, keep assembling them on my travels. My plan is to have every part of me that uh, would be covered by wearing a suit completely sure. covered. Really? So, wow. Yeah, neck neck to wrists and ankles is uh, is what I'm going to get done. Oh. Yeah. Straight Japanese on- gangster. Uh, yeah, they're not going to be uh, like f- that style. They're not going to be Yakuza style, but... Uh, there will be uh, some parallels there. I do like color. I'm going to get quite a few color ones. Um, mm. I like how they use murals, uh, so I mm. will do that, but it's not going to be specifically the Japanese mural um, style. Um, but I, I will have elements of that in there in some of the panels. I'm, I'm yeah. basically, my idea is to get my body uh, segmented up into, you know, I, I haven't counted them out exactly, but it's going to be upwards of 100 panels. Um, and then each right. one is going to have something different, completely filling it. Um, and I want to get them done on my travels so that they're, uh, they're a part of me and they're also a document of my journey. Um, and they, they, each one exposes a, a new part of myself, a, a new thing about myself. Um, because I think that's cool. And you'll have all those different art styles, uh, styles from the different artists. Exactly. Um, yeah, but I, I was dr- I was drawing the yakuza parallel because you know their tattoos don't show with their clothes either. Oh yeah, I didn't really think about that. <laughs> but yeah, I guess. But uh, I I do actually really like uh, their the the art style. I just don't like the the gang connection. Uh, <laughs> but they're real pretty though, aren't they? They oh, yeah. they've got some real pretty ones, uh, and at least a couple of them are going to be touching on that uh, on that 
um, what's well, it's not even like just the yakuza style. It's actually a, a style of artwork that had been done in Japan for hundreds of years, thousands of years, probably. How long has hmm. Japan been there? Uh, they migrated down from China, you know, some thousands of years before. But less yeah, than, like less than six thousand. Yeah, if you look at their um, if you look at their uh, historical paintings, they're in hmm. that art style, um, and it's actually a, a real tragedy that uh, a large number of their historical paintings and artworks were destroyed by Westerners because they had pornographic content because that wasn't even a thing to the Japanese. Hmm. You know, they were like, here's some history, here's some people having sex in a historical setting, and then missionaries turn up and they're like, burned, burned that, uh, which is which is saddening to me. Um, uh, and it should be saddening to all of us for, uh, for you know, the destruction of cultural relics that, uh, that have importance. Uh, the oh, earliest that, uh, culture in Japan was... Around thirty thousand BCE. Yeah. Fuck. Yep. Um, yeah. It's around okay. the time of Noah or so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm thinking the uh, the Australian Aborigines came down. Um, uh, some when I was in school, they were saying sixty thousand years. Some people now are only saying forty thousand years. Um, and there's still even contention about whether they traveled to Australia on the land bridge or whether they took boats. So, uh, you know, I, I still don't know the answer to that. I was looking it up the other night and I couldn't find it. Uh, the land bridge makes sense because apparently the, uh, the dingoes came down with them on their travels. Um, but they weren't domesticated dogs. They were still wild dogs, but they, they weren't, you know, at- attack dogs. They just sort of followed the humans in their, uh, as, as we traveled down in a bit of symbiosis. Um, but if we had to take boats, then we would have had to put them on the boats to get them here. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and it's entirely possible that uh, it was a combination of the both, that uh, Australia was much more connected to Papua New Guinea and you know New Guinea all the way up through Asia. Um, so there could have been places where they could have swum if they needed to, but they would have been able to walk the majority of it. So, yeah, it's probably some combination of the both. But, yeah, the uh, the people groups that populated throughout uh, throughout Asia did come down quite a long time ago, but then uh, much later... The, um, the ethnically Chinese, um, I believe it was the Han, uh, traveled down and, uh, and merged with all of these different populations on their travels. So that's why, um, you know, the Asians, uh, all the Southeast Asians, um, have a little bit of that, um, a little bit of that look. Uh, it's just those genes coming from that place, which I think is wonderful. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, like people groups, um, migrate over time. Uh, now we're living in a time where we can migrate even further with much more ease. Mm-hmm. So that's a good thing, I reckon. Well, Southeast Asia, you can see huge amounts of diversity between the mm-hmm. like the, the hill people and the other people. Yeah, uh, with the yeah. hill people being more from that that Aborigine line, and the uh, mm-hmm. the uh, other people coming more likely from China, much yes, more recently. Yeah. Yeah, and you can definitely see that. And like, for example, if you were to, I, I don't want to. Uh, no, we're having a racial discussion, and that's good. I wish that we had a, a person of a differing race here so that we could have their opinion on. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's it's still okay for us to talk about. Um, I'd like to see a comparison of like the uh, the uh, people from Papua New Guinea and the Australian Aborigines to see sort of where the genetic diversity came from there, because uh, they were likely the same people group traveling mm-hmm. down um, at the same time. Um, but then obviously some settled in New Guinea and some settled in Australia. Um, but, you know, if you were to compare someone from, say, Fiji to someone from uh, Korea, you know, the Koreans are almost entirely the Hun. Uh, you know, um, I say the Hun, I don't mean like the German Hun, I mean like the Chinese <laughs> ethnic group, mm-hmm. the Hun. Um, or Han is the bad is the a pejorative I don't know if if I am it's ignorance and I apologize uh, I'm just, just trying to have a, a good discussion about this well you're you're descended from the English well, actually I'm not oh. uh, actually I'm not no you got some uh, Greek uh, in you don't you no none no, no Greek no wow. um, yeah you thought because I'm so hairy no yeah. that's that's yeah yeah I got some of the black Irish the Moors uh, apparently we're descended from some Vikings, some some dark skinned Vikings on that side that settled in uh, settled in Ireland and bred with the natives. That's why I get black hair. Um, mm. And then on my mum's side, I'm uh, 
uh, French German pirates. Hmm. Um, they, they traveled down through, uh, the French Polynesian islands as pirates and then settled in New Zealand and became sheep farmers. So, uh, so Vikings one side, pirates the other. Wow. Yeah. Where, where do the sheep fuckers fit in? Um, well, my, my mom's family, um, had huge amounts of land in, in New Zealand and they just raised sheep. Uh, hmm. they didn't actually fuck them themselves. They, they just made them fuck each other. Which oh, is surprisingly easy to do. Uh, you know, if you, people don't know this, but if you have some livestock, you can just put them in a field and then come back later and there's more of them. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure anyone who plays mine, uh, plays Minecraft thinks that you have to hit them with a love spell, but you know, other than that, if, you know, you can just let him go for it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what my, uh, family did in New Zealand and then my family in Australia, my dad's side, they, uh, came over when there was no food in Ireland because of a potato blight. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, the, the joke about, uh, about us is that we're, we're a very classy people. You know, my, uh, my ancestors were picked to come to Australia by some of the finest magistrates in England. <laughs> but, uh, I actually don't think very many of my ancestors were criminals. I think we all just sort of came over here for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Couple of, um, that, that potato famine, that, that's such bullshit though, man. Yeah. Cause Ireland was exporting so much food. Yeah. Uh, it, and, and all the rich people could have taken care of that and just, yeah. they didn't need to eat potatoes for a while. Well, in, in fact, the, uh, the people who were sent over, and I, I think there was one or two families in my ancestry, uh, you know, hundreds of years back who were sent over, um, as criminals, but their crime was being poor. You know, that's, that's just what it was. Um, and then, yeah, the ones who couldn't eat, that was just being poor, you know, ship them off somewhere else. Uh, sure. hey, let's, let's find like the hardest place in the world to, to survive. Australia, let's go. Uh, but then, you know, since then, the rest of the world's been like, uh, hey, wait a minute. The most dangerous animal is man. And so they're trying to take over Syria and Northern Iraq. So, you know, like that happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've got Jackie Lambie and she's doing all she can, but. <laughs> Uh, you wouldn't get that reference. She's an awful politician here. Just the worst. Uh, mm. She's like our, uh, she's basically our, um, uh, Sarah Palin. Oh, oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Who unfortunately isn't looking as crazy by comparison now. Oh God, that's <laughs> so true. Oh yeah. Man. Cause, uh, cause was it Ted Cruz or, uh, he's one of them. Yeah. Ted did just announce uh, he's coming out for president. Yep. Who else? Someone else crazy did the same thing, eh? Donald Trump. Trump. Well, well Donald Trump are already played the birther card on on Ted Cruz, asking, "Can he really be the president?" You know, he really? was born in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which for our, our non-American listeners, the the Constitution says that you must be a natural-born U.S. citizen or a citizen by the time of the ratification of the Constitution. So you know, that part doesn't really apply anymore. But natural born, which means to natural to American parents, being or at it, least American parent. Well, not necessarily. It means that you have to be a citizen by nature of your birth, which either means you were born to yeah. American parents or born mm-hmm. in America. Yes, either applies. Yeah, so, so yeah. at the time of your birth, you were considered an american citizen yes so or eligible for american citizenship okay so basically if you're from so basically if you're from american samoa you can't be president correct that is correct but puerto rico you can only if you move to the mainland first yeah uh and guam how does guam fit in? same as puerto rico yep same as puerto rico you are a citizen just yeah no right to vote so here's the interesting thing somebody born in guam can move to Idaho and vote in the presidential election. I could move to Guam and then I can't. <laughs> but if I move to Australia, I can. Really? Yeah, yeah because you can get an absentee ballot if you're overseas. Oh, okay. You you're can't. talking about absentee for the U.S. I thought you were talking about voting in the Australian elections. No, no. You can. I could vote in the U.S. elections from Australia. Yeah. It- you could beca- you could vote in Australia if you became an Australian citizen, but yeah. why would you want to? Honestly, uh, but the back to the to the the natural born citizen thing. There this this there was a question at one point, um, which they're they're going to try to bring up Ted Cruz of whether or not you know what exactly that means. The, the standard uh, definition is what you know we we already talked about, but 
there was a president in the past who had been born overseas. Uh, his family was either in the military or, or on a diplomatic <laughs> mission. Was and, it George Washington? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, well, I'm pretty sure that he wasn't born in the United States of America either. Uh, I can double Just check like Obama. That. I am Googling. Uh, George Washington was born in Westmoreland County, Virginia. Yeah. yeah. In 1732. What country was that at the time? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> and oh, here we go. And didn't he it. serve four terms? Washington? Two. Yeah. Two? Yeah. Really? He was, sure was the most that you guys have had. Under the Constitution, yeah, it was only two. Yeah. Well, they didn't put in the two until later, I thought. Right, because nobody had bothered to... He set the standard of only serving twice, and nobody challenged that until FDR. And so oh, yeah. right after FDR died, they put in a rule that said you could only be president for two terms. Oh. But there was no Did reason it? to have have uh, that be law otherwise. Yeah, who's the uh, who's the other guy who was uh, who was a foreign born president? Um, I, I am looking this up. Obama and who? <laughs> oh come on Hawaii's more American than American Samoa Americans more uh, Hawaii's, Hawaii's more an actual Japan. state yeah uh, I feel bad for the American Samoans I saw a thing on them this week that's why I'm bringing it up mm. poor guys they should have they should have more representation but then so, so should the Australian Aborigines in Australian politics but anyway American Samoa just needs to be actually brought into the US as you know, so they can officially yeah. have a government. That right there would be pretty big. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. I mean, they can, they can serve in our military, but they're not good enough to be citizens. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But if they serve in Are our they- military, they can have a much easier time getting citizenship. Although True. they can also yeah, just you know very easily get citizenship. Yeah, but they it, they're still a rigmarole. They're not they're not automatically citizens, despite being from American Samoa. And the the people from Guam they do get the uh, they do get citizenship, but it's so much harder on them. I know a a, a, a a chick from Guam, and she served in the military, and she was traveling, and she had a Guam passport, and they're like, you need you need a visa to stay in the United States, and she blew her shit up at the airport. She's like, I'm a service member, I am an American. Guam is part of America. Fuck you. Nice. Uh, she probably sounded more American than me saying it. But. Chester Arthur. Oh, His mother was American, a native mm-hmm. of Vermont, and then moved to Quebec, <gasps> where she met and married his father. And it is rumored that he was born in Canada. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's cool. So you say Cruz is probably uh, probably is eligible to run as he eligible as is. Chester Arthur. Yeah, uh, it's something people yeah. should be. It, it's not something people should be saying that that's the reason he shouldn't be president. There's so many other reasons that he shouldn't be president. So many so, better reasons. Yeah, yeah. Focus but, on the better reasons. But it's nice to see you know the birther that is Trump come out against Cruz as well as Obama. That's good. I heard a lot of people saying, you know, where's the, where's the birthers now? Uh, yeah. So at least he's being consistent. Yeah. And yeah. You know, Arthur claims he was actually born in the U.S. Sure. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I think uh, if Trump wanted to run for president, he'd be allowed, but his hair would be denied. So that would be funny. <laughs> if like from the, if they're like, yeah, you can run, but yeah, not, not that hair. So he has to run bald. The two passed to go. Yeah. (laughs) He has to run as a bald man. Uh, John McCain, who recently ran uh, against Obama the first time, uh, was born in the Canal Zone. Oh, yeah? Huh? Panama. Oh. His parents were uh, there at the Naval Air Station in the Canal Zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but that's still, you said uh, on a military base. Uh, Military base in a U.S. territory overseas. That that still counts as consecrated u.s ground yeah and, and a consulate would basis. count as well so uh so if, you, if you're born in a consulate overseas you'd still be you'd still be eligible under that standard uh consulates are actual sovereign territory military bases aren't pretty sure i think it really depends the, on the base you tend typically there's there's deals made for it like at least the u.s for sure 
make steals yeah. to get immunity for the troops so that you yeah. get tried as an American, but it's not truly sovereign territory. <laughs> uh, a quick story. We were actually told, uh, while I was in Japan, if we got in trouble in Japan, that, you know, ba- the, the base in Yokosuka wasn't actually safe ground. We had to go onto one of the Navy boats. <laughs> uh, Ooh, wow. then, you, then you'd be considered on safe ground. Yeah, until then, they can cut your pinkies off. Yeah, uh, the Navy the Navy base in Yokosuka was still considered Japanese land. Yep. That's fair enough. I don't, I don't like the idea of, of foreign people's land being made not their land anymore. Um, well, you know, if it's which is why I'm that, which is but, why I'm leaving Australia in protest <laughs> to come to the country that actually does that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be coming over to do a tour. I'm going to start uh, promoting my my tour for early next year soon. So uh, so I'll put up a GoFundMe, and uh, hopefully you guys will have me back on to pimp it when it's up there. Okay, uh, yeah. So that all of your listeners have been writing in about get this fuckwit off your show. Um, yeah. You can be like, no, in fact, pay for him to come so that you can <laughs> see him in your town. I want to do every little town in America. I want to find my people. You know, I reckon that there's people who like the dirty comedy everywhere. Um, not all of them are in a place where uh, everyone agrees with them. So I'd like to go and help them meet other people in their town who like the dirty comedy, you know, like. The guy who's who's the mechanic in some some shitty little town, he'll he'll be like, "Oh, Nick Morgan, boy, I heard him on Atheist Nomads," and he'll come out to the show, <laughs> and like the milkman will be there, and he'll be like, "You like period and dick jokes?" And he's like, "Yes," and he's like, "But did we just become best friends?" And then they <laughs> high five, and then they're best friends, and I help them in that way. So that's that's my goal, guys. I want I want you guys to become friends through me and my comedy. And I want you to become my friends through me and my comedy because my friends support me, which is, is lovely of them to do. They shouldn't have done that for so long. They, they gave me false expectation. They said, no, Nick, you can totally make it as a comedian. Throw your entire life behind that idea. And I did. And uh, that's what I'm doing. So it's your fault, friends. It's your fault. <laughs> all uh, all those fucking enablers. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, basically. Comedy is my heroin. I'll, I'll give you that for sure. Start getting, start getting twitchy if I don't do it every week. <laughs> but if, if stand up comedy is my heroin, then I, would that make podcasts my methadone? No. Uh, no. No, it'd be more no. like your opium. Yeah. It, you're saying it's the more refined version. No, oh, not the less refined version. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the podcasts are kind of like your version of the road trip currently. You're, you know, hearing other people, other little stories, stuff like that. Not saying yeah. that you're incorporating it, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I want to, uh, when I am on my tour, I'm going to be running a, uh, a YouTube channel that has clips from all my shows and my travels. And I'm going to document the whole journey so that people who support it can follow me on my travels and become a real part of it. Um, nice. because I, you know, I, I want to do it, uh, not just for me, but you know, very much for me. Uh, it's <laughs> got to be a great experience for me, but, uh, for them as well, you know, like I'm, I'm doing comedy because I get laughs. I'm doing comedy because crowds like my stuff. And so that's why I'm doing it. So, uh, so support me on my journey, guys, support me on my journey and I'll come see you. I'll shake you by the hand and I'll sell you a, uh, a vibrating cock ring in the shape of a mustache. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's a legit. That's a legit thing. I'm going to get made to sell as merch on my tr- on my travels. <laughs> Are you going to have your like, name uh, engraved in it? Yeah, on the mustache, it's going to say um, Nick Morgan Moore, so that uh, so that people can take a Nick Morgan Moore mustache ride. <laughs> oh, wow. why why buy the toy when twenty bucks more gets you the real thing? That's true. That is definitely true. <laughs> I, I would I would pay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm sure a lot of people would. Yeah. Who wants a mustache ride? <laughs> that's true. You know, that's that's why I grew it long, so it's got so it's got the handles, you know, so you can hold on for extra grip. Right, right. Um, uh, yeah. Don't want right anyone fucking off before they're finished. What else? What else? What else? What else? Well, uh, we're at an hour and seven minutes, and you were just pimping stuff, which is the normal end. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, last, last question. Uh, yeah. let's say we're all wrong. You die, you go up to heaven, you see God at the pearly gates. What would you say to God? Uh, oh, really nice to meet you, Hades. I, uh, they, they definitely got the flames on your head, right? I, uh, could I get that done somewhere? 
<laughs> okay. Huh. <laughs> okay. There's no reason to believe it's the Christian God, guys. Like, there's, <laughs> there's, there's more reason to believe that it's, that it's, uh, uh, an abstract concept of energy. I had someone tell me, you know, God's just energy. I'm like, then why oh. give it a name that implies personhood? You know, <laughs> I, I believe in energy. The, the universe obviously has energy. There's, there's obviously movement of particles in the universe. There's no reason to ascribe personality to that. Um, but definitely, you know, if there's a God, highly unlikely it's the Christian God. If it is, obviously he's a son of a bitch. Um, and, <laughs> Uh, I always found myself uh, reading like the ancient Greek gods and being uh, being really enraptured by that. And then I bloody heard Stephen Fry make the same uh, the same sort of thing. I'm like, damn you, Stephen Fry, for being more intelligent and wise and and well spoken than me. But uh, I mean, he's got a few years advantage on me. Maybe by the time I'm his age, I'll be a fraction of his uh, have a fraction of his wit. But uh, but yeah, I, I definitely found myself associating with the uh, with the Greek gods a, a, a lot more, especially Hades. I always felt hmm. that Hades got a raw deal in those uh, in those myths. Um, you well, know, the, the, you other, the other the gods, the, yeah, you and, pushed and, down to the shit place. I reckon that's that's why in his you know, in the narratives that are about him, he. Uh, I don't so much even think. Uh, I I always try and think of stories. Uh, definitely something that I should do is is write more. Uh, maybe see about writing something that people should read rather than hearing me tell in the form of a dick joke. But um, but I really liked Hades. Um, the other gods sort of used and abused humanity. We were there for their enjoyment, their entertainment. You know, Zeus used to turn into a giant goose and come down and fuck virgins. Um, all of the gods seem to take what they could from humanity while we were in our active phase on Earth. Whereas the, uh, whereas Hades, he, he, he was in Hades, like the, the place is named after him. But, uh, but he seemed to care about people. He seemed to care about people's souls. That's why he made a place for them after they were done on Earth. That's why, yeah, that's why it's his domain. So, I, I really sort of felt that maybe Hades was the only Greek god that was was worthy of that because that was what he chose to do. Um, so I found that you know sort of inspiring when I was in my uh, non-religious phase after I'd left the church and was sort of uh, wandering around trying to figure out what I believed. I went through a long period of like deism and and sort of universalism. It was sort of a, a very gradual step back, you know. First of all, I left the church and I was like, well, maybe Jesus is real, but not my denomination. Maybe it's all the denominations, but it's the most loving, accepting version of that that is God. And then like after a week of that, I was like, nah, that's bullshit. And then I was like <laughs> a little more. I'm like, maybe it's just the Abrahamic religions. And I, I looked at you know, Judaism and, and Islam and I'm like, nah, they're fucked too. Um, <laughs> and then I went to sort of, you know, this, this really sort of wishy-washy sort of not quite deism yet. I believe that like, you know, movement in the universe was, was caused by God, you know, maybe even the universe itself moving is God. And then I was like, that, that is an abstract concept is interesting, but, uh, in a practical sense, it has, it has no, uh, real intellectual merit. And so I let that go. And uh, eventually I settled on, uh, Hey, there's no evidence for God. I'll mm -hmm. just tell dick jokes and fuck hot bitches. Hell yeah. That was the right response, though, the silence. Throw some crickets in there if you got some in post. Um, <laughs> and I'm that all totally out of work. dick jokes. I'm never out of dick jokes. That's that's the thing, you know. Can run out of hot bitches, can never run out of dick jokes. <laughs> 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 uh. You're getting more mail from this episode, guys. <laughs> I can hope. Yeah. Oh man, I I think I dropped the uh, I think I dropped the unholy trinity and the shit a little bit when we're at the uh, when we're at the barbecue. I told my feminism joke in front of them and their wives, and <laughs> uh, and Jake was like, "You need a bell. You need a bell to ring before you tell any jokes." And I'm like, "I just need a bell before I speak." <laughs> <laughs> speaking about speaking, um, so imaginary friends. That's looking in, uh, like neck, not this. Uh, yes, I'll confirm that and get back to you, but I, I really want to get you on, uh, soon. So check the social medias, tell them to check your social medias and we'll all plug your appearance. Sweet. Okay. Jake used to have me and him bro down about our, about our facial hair. Nice. Yeah. I've okay. got such, I've got such a talented mustache guys. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was one of my friends in particular who was pimping the mustache rides. 
uh, but they told me that they actually latched onto it when they saw someone else doing it. So I don't even know where where uh, where all of the love for it came from. I know where a lot of it came from. It came from me. I love me. I'm I'm pretty <laughs> narcissistic. In case anybody didn't realize, I'm I'm on a podcast just talking about how good I am for an hour right now and pretty much every week all i'm doing is looking for opportunities to get my voice out there because i love me so much but uh <laughs> yeah I, I keep saying like i'll know that i've found that special lady when i love someone more than i love myself um you know and <laughs> a, a, as a middle child you know it was important that i love myself because no one else was going to uh, yeah. and that's that's the root of my narcissism i actually talked to my little brother that's about so it he was saying that he's more narcissistic than our older brother. I'm like, but I'm more narcissistic than both of you put together. And he's like, without a doubt, but we're talking on a gradient scale here, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that's so sad. Nobody, can, somebody should love you. Yeah. No, I, I think someone does. Someone told me they did the other day and it felt real warm and fuzzy on the inside. So we'll see where that goes. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about in their vagina, by the way. Damn. Maybe, maybe, maybe fuzzy's not how it's supposed to feel on the inside. It's a bit weird. Uh, fuzzy's on the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was sort of fuzzy up around the top. Now that makes some, that makes more sense. Yeah. There you go. No, See? no, it was an emotional thing. It was an emotional connection. And also if it's fuzzy on the inside, that's probably a sign that she needs to see a doctor. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking that. Yeah. A fuzzy, no cottage cheese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, don't want to get chatch. Do you guys know the term chatch? No. Nah, me and my friends invented it in high school, and we're oh. still trying to get it to catch on. Yeah, no, chatch is is the name for the cheesy discharge from a yeast infection. Chatch. All right. Yeah, like what have you ever called it before? Like you just call it like bad cheese. cheese. Yeah, Cottage but no, cheese, chatch. Yeah. Chatch, chatch is the name for that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Huh. We have a new word to pimp. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've invented a, okay. I've invented a few things. Uh, I, I reappropriated something a little while ago. Somebody was trying oh, to express no. sympathy for something that I was going through. How hot it is here. They were like, don't you have air con? I'm like, no, I'm poor. And they're like, I'll buy you an air con unit. I'm like, good. I can plug it into my wall socket and get the no electricity that I can afford. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and they were like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, don't apologize. And they're like, I'm expressing sympathy for what you're going through. And I'm like, there's a word for that. And that word is didtums. Have you heard the word didums? No. Fuck no. Yeah. Back in the day in Australia, if somebody's having a pity party, you'd say, Oh, poor didums, poor didums. But, <laughs> um, and it's like mocking them. Uh, and I started using it because, like, you know, whenever I'd hear somebody expressing something that I'm like, oh, I'm feeling for you, I just didn't have a word for that. So I was like, I, I could just say sympathy. But then they're like, oh, you're just saying the word sympathy. I'm like, no, 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 didums, but legit didums, you know? Like, I, I, it really sucks what you're going through, and I want you to know that I'm feeling for you, so didums. So <laughs> use that one as well, guys. If somebody's having a hard day, just pat them on the shoulder, look them in the eye, and say didums. I'm here with you. <laughs> okay. All right, good, gentlemen. Good that's sense of brotherly. Yes. Okay. Anyways, yeah. yes. <laughs> so it's not all about it's not all about the dick jokes with me. Not all, but a lot of it. Mostly the best parts. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> all righty, Nick. Thank you very much for coming back on with us. Thank you for having me for a second show. You obviously didn't learn your lesson. So, uh, so if you don't learn it from this, I guess I'll be back in a few months' time to pimp my trip. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> And then couch yeah. hop hopping across the U.S. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Next year, guys. So everyone get ready. Uh, get your couches um, laminated now. You'll be wanting to get them steam cleaned afterwards. Um, <laughs> definitely. You can find me on Twitter at Nick Morgan Moore. That's my name. You can also find my Facebook comedian page. Uh, you can also find my Facebook personal page, I guess. I get a lot of get a lot of fr friend requests from people who I don't know, and I'm like, we're not friends yet. And I add them if they have people that I'm friends with, uh, because I'm a soft touch. But like my comedian page, I, I put jokes and stuff up on that way more than my personal page. My personal page is in w was entirely there for me to try and ho hook up with girls that I came into casual contact with. But like <laughs> now, it, now it's just its own thing. So uh, so yeah, definitely like my comedian page. You can find that by searching. Nick Morgan Moore. That's my name. And also, uh, yeah, keep an eye out into the future for my, uh, for my GoFundMe and, uh, 
and uh, get ready to have me on your couch because I will be there. Badass. Awesome. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com. Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.